All right, I'm excited to speak to y'all this morning. Um, Pastor Bird has been wanting me to speak since last month, and so finally I have the opportunity to speak. And this morning I'm going to be talking about uh, persevere. How many of y'all are enjoying the series on persevere? Isn't that good? How many of y'all know we need to persevere every day, right? We need to keep going. We need to stay um, faithful. We need to stay steadfast, right? And so persevering is a powerful word, and it kind of can be an overwhelming word, right? But when we get the true meaning of persevere, it'll be a benefit to us. It'll be a blessing to us. Amen. All right, so let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this morning, God. And, and Father, I just submit myself to you this morning, God. I ask that you just um, let me be your microphone this morning, Lord. Let me be the person that speaks on your behalf, on the Holy Spirit's behalf, Father God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory, God. I ask that the word will soak into our hearts, into our minds, and into our souls. And it's in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen, amen, amen. All right, okay, so let's go ahead. If you have your Bibles, turn to Mark 5.25. Mark 5.25, and we're going to read 25 through 34 in the, the Passion Translation. When Pastor Bert told me I was going to be speaking uh, this month, and I actually had the opportunity to speak this month, um, he was like, just stick with the Persevere series. And I was like, okay, so I was just thinking, I was like, okay, so how... What, like when I think about the word persevere, I was just praying, like God put into my heart, putting into my spirit what this word means. Give me an example. Give me a story. And God uh, popped into my mind the story of the woman with the issue of blood. How many of y'all heard that story? It's a beautiful story. It's an amazing story. And that's what she had. She had an issue of blood. She just kept bleeding. She probably had her menstrual cycle and it was just out of whack. Am I right? And she had this for 12 years. She had this for 12 years. Ladies, can you imagine? We're like, oh my goodness. 12 years. Not a week, not two weeks, not a couple days. For 12 years, and the Bible says it was a flow. You know the water outside is flowing down the street? She had a flow. And I think she had some kind of illness or disease. And back then, of course, they didn't have people that can treat that nowadays. But as we read through this word, we're going to hear her story. And I'm going to stop in between, this, into, in, stop in between the, uh, the scriptures because I want to explain some things to you that God revealed to me as I was studying this, okay? And I have been meditating on this story. I have been reading it and rereading it and rereading it. And, now I, and I, last night, I just spent a couple hours just studying certain things in the scriptures that God was popping out at me, okay? All right, so let's start in verse 25, uh, Mark 5, 25. And Jesus was um, crossed, he had crossed the river, and he was going uh, on, you know, he had just crossed the river, and a guy, kind of give you a pre, um, a setup, there was a man named Jairus, and he was one of the leaders of the synagogue, and he had heard Jesus had landed where he was at. And so he went to Jesus, and he said, Jesus, I have a 12-year-old daughter that's dying at home. Can you please come with me and lay hands on her and heal her? And Jesus said, I'll do that. So Jesus was on his way. But while he was on his way, crowds of people were just like, how many of you are claustrophobic? I don't, I don't, just say you, I don't want to confess that over you, but how many of y'all feel like, oh, I hate people just like Jesus was totally surrounded by people. It, even in the scripture, we're going to read it. It says that he was pushed. He was pushed from all sides, and people were just pushing him and, 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 and just, like, kind of trying to get to him, trying to get to Jesus. And I'm, so, I'm sure that Jesus had his entourage, right? He had his disciples protecting him. He had, how many of y'all been to a concert? I'm not going to ask what kind of concert. But how many of y'all been to a concert, okay? If you've been to a concert and you get real in the rowdy concerts, they're pushing and shoving, and, and you're just all up in everybody's business, Right? Okay, nobody cared about any kind of illness and disease, right? And this woman had an illness. Okay, and let's start, let's start, at, chapter, uh, start at verse 5. It says, what time is it? Okay, we may get out early. We'll see. Pastor Bert said 15 minutes. I'm going to go 15.5 seconds. All right? 
Uh, Gil's closed down, so y'all pray for her. Pray for me, okay? So we may just stay till twelve, since the Gil's shut down on me. We got no reason to get out now. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, okay, let's start at verse five. Now, in the crowd that day was a woman. Someone say a woman, a woman, who had suffered horribly from continual bleeding for twelve years. And she had endured a great deal under the care of various doctors. Yet in spite of spending all she had on their treatments, she was getting worse instead of getting better. How many of y'all ever felt like that before? You have gone to doctors and you have spent and paid co-pays and, and, and did this and x-rays and MRIs and CAT scans and, and whatever it is. And still... No answer. How many of y'all have been through there? Been down that road? She has spent all she had. But you know, this woman, back according to Jewish law, because she was bleeding, any time a woman was bleeding, they were considered unclean. Okay? And then if you go back to Leviticus chapter 25, it talks about the a ritual, what a woman had to do after she was done with her menstrual. And, and, and also a ritual if a man had, had touched her, what he had to do for seven days. So look it up. It's crazy. Thank God we don't have to do that now, right? And she was considered unclean. And because she was considered unclean, she could, she could not touch anyone and no one can touch her because if they did, they had to go through this whole ritual to be clean again. Okay? She lived in isolation. She probably didn't have a home. She probably didn't have family. She probably didn't have any support. Just imagine, she was unclean. Society saw her as unclean. Society didn't even give her a name. They called her a woman. And she probably just lived on the outskirts. Okay, but she heard about a man named Jesus that can heal and that can restore. She heard about him. Amen. How many of y'all hear things, right? But she believed it. And all she had left was her faith. She was broke. She had nothing. And so she heard about Jesus and she said, I'm going to go see this man, Jesus. Because she was at the end of her rope. She had nothing left. And, just because she, and because she was unclean, she could not enter the temple according to Jewish law. Because she was considered unclean. But this is the most amazing part. It's that Jesus was the temple. And she went and she met the temple herself. And she touched the temple herself. Amen. The living flesh, the temple of God, she touched him. Who cares about the building? She went and she met the temple of God. Isn't that powerful? God brought the temple to her. And so she said, okay. Let's go in verse 27. She said, and when she, and it says, when she heard about Jesus, Jesus healing power, some say healing power. She pushed through the crowd, and she came up behind him, and she touched his prayer shawl. In other translations, it says clothes, but in the Passion, it says prayer shawl. For she kept saying to herself, if I could even touch, if I, if I could just, if I could touch even his clothes, his clothes, not even the flesh of Jesus, his clothes, I will be healed. You know, the prayer shawl, back in the days, the prayer shawl, I don't know if you've seen, Pastor, where you, I don't know if you still have your prayer shawl here. I was looking for it, and I couldn't find it. I didn't want to dig on your stuff. But can you grab it for me? Do you mind grabbing it for me? I want to show you this prayer shawl. And I studied the prayer shawl. And I think it's just so, it's, it's, I think that's just a whole preaching in itself. But while well, Pastor Bert grabs it real quick. Thank you, Lord. The prayer shawl symbolized God's promises and the commandments. And on the prayer shawl, there's um, um, tassels on it. 
there's tassels. And the tassels themselves symbolized God's promises and the commandments. And that's why a lot of the religious leaders wore the, the, the prayer shawls, because they symbolized something. And so it says in the word that Jesus was wearing a prayer shawl. Thank you, honey. And you got this from Israel, right? It was a gift. Yeah, it was original. Um, and so she was, Jesus was wearing this, and she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I could just touch the clothes, I'll be healed. And this right here, the tassels represented the commandments of God, and it re represented the promises of God. Isn't that amazing? Just in a prayer shawl. And it, and, and it, and, um, in Galatians 4.28, it says that we are the children of promise. It calls us the children of promise. I want you to remember that. You are a children. You are a child of promise. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are a child of promise. So as she was going and she was going after Jesus and he was wearing this beautiful prayer shawl, she pushed her way through the crowd. She pushed her way through the crowd to get a hold of the promise. How many of y'all are pushing through the crowd to get a hold of your promise? Say man. She had to push and she had to shove. She had to. So she could touch the prayer shawl. So she can touch this, this piece of holy clothing that Jesus was wearing. Some of us, we have to push our way to get our healing. We have to push our way to get our miracle. We can't just sit down and expect it to come and happen and just fall and little pixie dust falls upon us and we get healed. No, we have to push our way. She didn't just go ahead and she was just like, well, I'm just going to lay here. And maybe he'll see me when he passes by. You know what I mean? Like damsel in distress. No. She's like, I'm pushing through the disciples. I'm pushing through everybody coming upon Jesus because I need to touch him because he has the promise. And he has the healing that I need to get better. She had nothing left but faith. Nothing left. She was done. I think after this, she was like, I'm done. Like, I'm putting all, I'm putting all my tokens into this. I'm putting all my bets into this because I know that the promise that he has is for me. And I want to remind you, keep pushing. Because your miracle is right in front of you. And you got to keep going. You got to keep serving. You got to keep coming to church. You got to keep praying. You got to keep moving and keep pushing yourself towards Jesus. Keep pushing yourself. Let's go to verse 29. As soon as her hand touched him, her bleeding immediately stopped. And she knew it, for she could feel her body instantly being healed of her disease. She felt it just, she felt it just leave her body, that disease and that illness. She didn't wait for a prophet to go tell her to dip herself in the river seven times. She didn't wait for an angel to come and stir the water so she can jump into it and get healed. She went after it. She got aggressive with her faith. We cannot get lazy with our faith family. We've got to get aggressive with our faith. We've got to keep praying because this world is not going to get any better. We've got to be aggressive in our faith just like the world is aggressive in their beliefs. We've got to be aggressive in our faith. Amen. Let's keep going. Verse 30. Jesus knew at once that someone had touched him. For he felt the power that always surged around him. And I was kind of reading more commentary on that, Pastor Polly. And you know what? It, it says that, that Jesus had this, like, vibrating power around him. It was like, it was like, like, it was just, like, you ever heard, like, the electricity just, you can hear it sometimes, am I right? 
Brother Hector, I know you work with Lake Church. You can hear it. It was that power that surrounded Jesus. And it says that, um, where am I at? Someone had touched him. He felt the power always surging around him, had passed through him for someone to be healed. And he turned and he spoke to the crowd saying, who touched my clothes? You know, Jesus knows everything, right? Come on, Jesus. You know who touched you. Why are you asking that question? Because he had to, because he had to have her, he had, he wanted her to show herself. I was reading a little bit more and I was thinking, you know what? I believe, and I looked and I looked, that this was the only time a woman or man ever went and pursued Jesus and touched him without even him knowing. Well, he knew, but you know what I mean. Because he was always the one going and touching people and healing people, right? But it was never vice versa until this woman showed up. She's special. Jesus knows all things, and he knew exactly who touched him. And the moment that he felt the power leave, he knew a miracle had happened in her life. She had to come forward, and we're going to read that next year in a minute. And he wanted her to come forward because he wanted the whole crowd to see what was going on. And I got to thinking, okay, if we can just picture it, Jesus in a crowd of people, everybody pushing up against him, the disciples trying to, like, try, like, security, you know, trying to block all these people, hoping they're not trying to harm him. And this woman gets through and, ch- and touches the prayer shawl and touches just a remnant of his clothes. And how come she was the only one that got healed? Everybody was push- pushing up on Jesus. Everybody was there trying to get a hold of him. Everybody was saying, Jesus, Jesus, Rabbi. They were calling him. But she touched him. Everybody else was touching him, but she got healed. It doesn't say anybody, anything else about the, anybody in the crowd. They all got healed because they touched him. No, it was her faith that caused her to receive the miracle. It caused her to receive the healing. It was her faith. Turn your neighbor and say it was her faith. Many of us, we crowd around the written word of God. We crowd around this, and we, and we go to church, and, and we, do all, we do all these things, and sometimes we do it just out of habit. And we've got to get to the point that we're like this woman, that we, not only do we crown around the word, because Jesus is the word, right? He was the walking, walking Bible, and we have the, this Bible here. But not only do we crowd around this word, but, but we touch the scriptures so that we can receive the healing that it has for us. That's the difference. We don't want to be the crowd that's just here uh, reading the word. Okay, that's nice. Okay, back to my day. No, we need to be like the woman and pull the scriptures out. Pull those promises out. Pull those healing scriptures out that you need. Pull those financial scriptures that you need. Pull those provision scriptures that you need. Pull all those scriptures that you need to get through your day. That is where you have touched it. You have become the woman that has touched the word. And not only that, received it and received its miracles. Because everybody was touching Jesus, but not everybody received a miracle. It was her. Because her faith, and she knew, she was declaring, if I only touch his, if I just touch the garment, I will be healed. If I can just read this word and meditate a day and night, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my, unto my path. I will hide the word in my heart that way and that sin against him. And I receive that as a just like, that's, that's, my, that's my answer, that's my guidance. Though I walk through the valley. The scripture needs to be, it needs to come alive in your life. It can't just be, oh, okay, highlight, that's nice, okay. No, we've got to make it alive. We've got to use it. We've got to 
put it to purpose. We've got to put feet to our faith. Don't just be the crowd, but be the woman who touched Jesus in faith and received a miracle. Verse 31. His disciples answered, what do you mean who touched you? Look at this huge crowd. They're all pressing up against you. But Jesus' eyes swept across the crowd looking for the one who had touched him for healing. Verse 33. And when the woman who experienced this miracle realized what had happened to her, she came before him trembling with fear and threw herself down at his feet saying, I was the one who touched you. And she told him her story of what had happened. Verse 34. And then Jesus said to her, daughter, turn your name and say daughter. Because you dare to believe your faith has healed you. Go with peace in your heart and be free of your suffering. Isn't that powerful? And there's some things I want to point out here. Jesus called her daughter. I don't think, and I've, I've looked, that has any time has Jesus ever called a woman. Remember, she was just called a woman. She didn't have a title. But he called her daughter. A daughter. When you call someone daughter, that means you're, you see them, see them as family, right? We have spiritual sons and we have spiritual daughters. We see them as family. What an honor was it that she was called daughter from God himself. And he invited her to his family when he called her daughter. He brought her community again. He brought her her family again. He brought her to have a, a, an existence again. God restored everything, and he gave her peace. How many of y'all we need peace? Peace. He gave her peace, and he restored everything that she had lost. In other scriptures, even talks about he, how he restored her financially. In other versions, in other scriptures. So I want to encourage y'all. I want to encourage y'all. Be like this woman and push to see Jesus. Don't be like the crowd that's just pushing, pushing, pushing. But take the word of God and use it. And to use your faith so that you can receive the miracle. So you can receive the fruit of the word of God. Her faith was a key to her miracle. Her faith was a key to her miracle. And then after that happened, Jesus went and raised a little girl. He healed that little girl. Well, she had died, actually. He raised her back. 